It's okay if you're wondering, is the COVID-19 vaccine safe for people like me? And when you're ready, here's your answer. It was tested by adult volunteers of different ages, races, genders, ethnicities, and health conditions. Tens of thousands of people, a group as diverse as California itself. And thanks to them, we know the vaccine is safe. Let's get you there. Let's get to immunity. Learn more at vaccinateall58.com or call 833-422-4255. Brought to you by the California Department of Public Health. Everyone loves shopping online. Well, I'm going to tell you what I tell my golf buddies when they buy clubs. Stop searching for coupon codes. Download Capital One Shopping to your computer. Capital One Shopping instantly searches for available coupon codes and automatically applies them at checkout. Plus, it's free, and you don't even need a Capital One card to use it. That's like hitting a hole in one without even trying. Capital One Shopping. It's kind of genius. What's in your wallet? Savings and available coupons vary. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is a morning update. Hey, what's up, everybody, and greetings from Sin City. Before we jump into our article today, I'd just like to let you all know that our good friends over at the Prince and the Pervert podcast, Jen and Lisa, are involved in a podcast competition that has to do with people voting for them. So, obviously, it's time to rally, Jeffrey Epstein Show folk. Make sure you're voting for Lisa and Jen. I will post a link in the description box. And make sure you show our two favorite people from Down Under all the love that they deserve. All right, so to our business at hand for the day. We talked about how Ghislaine Maxwell was trying to compel Annie Farmer into telling her how much money she received in the settlement. And when Ghislaine Maxwell attempted that move, it was disgusting then, and it remains disgusting now. Well, thankfully, the judge ruled that it's none of Maxwell's damn business what Annie was paid out. It's nobody's business, frankly. Whatever sort of compensation these uh, ladies get, that's between them, the fund, and the, you know, the, the law. Besides that, it's really nobody's business, especially Ghislaine Maxwell's business. You would think that this broad would be way more worried about her own trial, about her own defense, and not so worried about how much money these survivors are being paid out. So... The fact that she thought she was going to be able to compel Annie into divulging that information is laughable at best. And I am glad that the judge decided that that was not going to be the case. Um, Judge Schofield in Manhattan ruled in favor of Annie and... uh, Yeah, so Annie will not have to divulge that amount of money that she was compensated. She will not have to divulge anything to Ghislaine Maxwell. And Maxwell should probably start taking a little bit of caution with the way she is conducting herself in the courts because she's getting nothing but L's. She's not getting anything accomplished and she's just spinning her wheels in neutral at this point. So there's that update there for the story about uh, Maxwell trying to compel Annie into giving her the amount that was dispersed to her. Now, there's not a very long article on that or anything, so we're not going to get too deep. I just wanted to touch on that briefly before we jump into our article for today and uh, keep that story updated, right? I'm thinking about doing a new set of segments called Quick Hits, and with those segments, 
it would be to update stories like this. You know, maybe do like seven or eight minutes to add some more context to stories that have been running, but maybe there isn't a bunch of news, but enough that it needs to be updated. So instead of trying to drag out a small story into a 17, 18, or 20-minute segment, I'm thinking about just using these little quick hits, quick blitzes, and keeping the story updated that way as well. Let me know what you guys think about that. Would you be interested in some more content like that? Some more, you know, eight, nine-minute clips, maybe seven-minute clips, depending on the story, where we just, you know, keep adding context? I know that sometimes it's a big commitment to sit down and listen for, you know, 25, 30 minutes, two times a day. So maybe we'll do something like that. Let me know what you folks think. Shoot me some email. Hit me up on Twitter. Let me know. All right. So we're going to jump into our article today. And the article we're going to discuss is about the unsealed testimony that dropped. And specifically, we're going to be talking about the massage portion. Now, we have an article from New York Post, and the author is Ben Fuerherd. The headline is, Massage Testimony Ghislaine Maxwell Fault to Keep Hidden is Unsealed. Now, obviously, we know that this does not fall under the blanket of private interactions that Preska talked about. This is obviously something that is pertinent to the case. This is something that is important to understand what occurred and to understand why Maxwell is under fire. So that's why Preska released this portion of it and unredacted it. It is very, very crucial that everybody understands that Ghislaine Maxwell is a liar. And according to all of this evidence that we have, the circumstantial evidence surely points that way, the depositions surely point that way, and the prosecution seems to think the same. Ghislaine Maxwell's own lawyers aren't jumping up and down and going crazy like uh, it's a House of Pain video saying that she's innocent. It's all about technicalities. It's all about looking for these loopholes or trying to find a way to wiggle off of the hook. This time around, though, I think that the fish has found themselves completely and utterly at the mercy of the fishermen. And that would be the prosecution at this point, because Maxwell certainly doesn't seem to be wriggling off of this hook anytime soon. Testimony showing Ghislaine Maxwell claiming to have never given a massage to her perverted ex-co-conspirator, fellow child abuser, general all-around scuzzbag pal and pedophile Jeffrey Epstein, or to anyone else, was unsealed in a civil case Thursday after she lost a legal fight to keep it under wraps. So she's never given a a massage to anyone else ever in her life, huh? Never once gave anyone a massage. Hmm, interesting. We know that's a bunch of BS. And it's funny that she corners herself like this in the deposition and that she answers so forcefully in the deposition when she could have easily pleaded the fifth just like Epstein but what she did was well she sunk herself this is why I talk about perjury traps this is what they do this is what the FBI does they will set a perjury trap like this and if you're not slick and if you think that you're smarter well This is the end result most times. Even if they don't have something on you, well, they'll figure something out. They'll find a way to get you to lie to them. And then once you lie to the FBI, that's a crime. So, yeah. The last thing you want to do is lie to people like this because it will come back to haunt you in a deposition, especially when the federal government is gunning for you. The excerpt, which is at the heart of a perjury case against the British socialite, a uh, co-conspirator, general all-around scuzzbag, 
was part of a July 2016 deposition Maxwell gave in a civil defamation suit brought against her by Virginia Roberts, who claims she was recruited by Maxwell to be abused by Epstein and his associates. So once again, you can see why they have so much venom for Virginia and why they're so gung-ho and looking forward to trying to destroy her reputation because she has brought the goods. It's all of this testimony by Virginia that really opened the door for this. And it's what moved the spotlight back on them. And it also gave voice to all of those girls who were voiceless. All of these survivors who have come forward and have spoken out in public They have become the voice and the de facto face of all of the unnamed girls that have been lost to time or to history or who have never even been reported in this case. Did you ever give a massage to anyone other than Mr. Epstein at any of Mr. Epstein's properties? An attorney for Roberts asked Maxwell. So right there, the, the attorney setting it up, right? Open-ended question. Let's, let's get the, the tires kicked here. Let's, let's get her on record. And let's see how truthful she's going to be. And it worked. It most certainly worked. Because the way they walked her in to the perjury here, well, it was quite well-crafted by the prosecution. They did their homework. They knew what they were dealing with. They knew the factors in the case. And then they used all of that to add the perjury charges on top of the other charges that they were preparing for her. And as you well know, I think that that's just the beginning of the end for these people, right? I believe that a superseded indictment is on its way. And that superseded indictment will contain Vicious RICO charges. First of all, I never said I gave Mr. Epstein a massage, Maxwell responded, which is absolute BS. I mean, people have, people talked about how she gave uh, Jeffrey Epstein a massage, and she's talked about it as well. So it's pretty funny that she thought that would never come back to haunt her. And here we are, the year 2021, 2020, and right back boomeranging around, karma comes and smashes her directly in the mush. Boy, it's joyful to watch, isn't it? Part of the excerpt is included in the Southern District of New York's criminal indictment against Maxwell, who faces two perjury charges and four charges related to her allegedly procuring young women for Epstein to abuse. So... The federal government has proven here, as they go after Maxwell, that they've been capable of this the whole time. And they sat on their hands. They sat on a mountain of evidence. Highest, the highest ranking members of the DOJ signing off on Epstein's non-prosecution agreement even. But now, the pressure gets turned up on the public officials and all eyes are on the Department of Justice. And all of a sudden, well, things are moving in a different direction, aren't they? And while that is certainly good to see, that doesn't mean that they're off the hook for their non-action and their terrible behavior previously. I truly believe that after all is said and done, When the smoke clears and convictions happen, that Senate and Congress need to convene and hold meetings and hold all sorts of hearings about what occurred here and how it was allowed to occur. And anybody that was involved in harboring Jeffrey Epstein's um, image that was a federal official or somebody who was elected to office or anything like that needs to be censored or needs to be charged criminally if they were involved in criminal acts. Because 
what occurred previously for the decades leading up to the arrest, the second arrest of Epstein and then Maxwell is unacceptable and it can never, ever, ever be allowed to happen again. The feds allege she knowingly lied about the massages. Yeah, for sure she did. What, she never gave Epstein a massage? She was the one who showed these girls how to give these massages, her and Sarah Kellen. I mean, who does she think she's kidding? There are dozens and dozens of witnesses that are lined up against her. It's going to be absolutely insane to see how many people come out and act as witnesses against Maxwell. I I bet you there's going to be a procession of them. Maxwell's attorneys had nevertheless sought to keep the excerpt redacted in the civil case, but Judge Loretta Presco ruled earlier this week that it should be made public because it does not deal with consensual consensual sexual activity between adults. And this is what I talk about with the cross-referencing, right? We see in the criminal report in the criminal charges against Maxwell, the same thing we see here in the defamation suit. And this is how they got from A to B. So it's important for the cross-referencing and as a blueprint and as a receipt. It does not relate to private sexual activity of consenting adults, but only to massages, Preska wrote in her decision. Any private interest she has in sealing this portion of testimony does not outweigh the presumption of public access that attaches to it. That is for sure. And again, Preska understands, I believe, that this adds great context to it. And the fact that receipts are being provided can only be a good thing moving forward as far as transparency is concerned. Because at the end of the day, there has been a complete and total breakdown when it comes to not only the system, but the transparency that we're supposed to have within the system. There has been none of that. So it's nice to see somebody in a position of power like Preska trying to change things. Maxwell has pleaded not guilty to all the counts she is facing. She's awaiting trial in federal jail in Brooklyn. Epstein survivors have accused Maxwell of acting as his recruiter in the 1990s, convincing girls and young women to visit his properties in Florida, the Virgin Islands, and New York, where he would abuse them. Not only that, she's being accused of actually partaking in the abuse. Remember, that's a whole different level of scum, right? That is a whole different level of scum. It's one thing to help Epstein refurbish his image. It's a whole nother thing entirely to be involved on the ground with the abuse. The multimillionaire pedophile who killed himself in a lower Manhattan jail cell, allegedly, in 2019 often groomed his survivors by asking them to massage him. 100% air quotes, massage. That's why it's laughable at best when Dershowitz acts like, oh, I only got a massage at Jeffrey Epstein's, when everybody knows that massage was code word for something entirely different. For Maxwell... Big mistake for her was answering questions during that deposition and not following the path of her pal Jeffrey Epstein and pleading the fifth. Sometimes hubris and your big mouth, well, they come back to haunt you. If you'd like to contact me, you could do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All of the links that go with this episode can be found in the description box. All right, folks, I'll be back later on. Hope you all enjoy your Friday. It's okay if you're wondering, is the COVID-19 vaccine safe for people like me? And when you're ready, here's your answer. It was tested by adult volunteers of different ages, races, genders, ethnicities, and health conditions. Tens of thousands of people, a group as diverse as California itself. And thanks to them, we know the vaccine is safe. Let's get you there. Let's get to immunity. Learn more at vaccinateall58.com or call 833-422-4255. Brought to you by the California Department of Public Health. Omakase. In Japanese, the word means, I'll leave it up to you. It's like saying, hey chef, what would you make if you were the guest? 
At Simple Feast, it's omakase every week. Our chefs thoughtfully compose three plant-based dinners with the finest local organic ingredients. It's also called Chef's Choice, but omakase sounds way better. Get $25 off your first meal kit order with the code FEAST25 at simplefeast.com. <laughs> 